Okay. I had the booster shot today, and so my arm's hurting a lot. But other than that, I, no side effects, thankfully. Let's talk about the Tinder Swindler. This mofo. Okay. Somebody told me to watch it. One of, one of you <laughs> had brought it up. And I watched the documentary tonight. And at first I felt really annoyed by this woman. The first one. Can't remember. I don't know her name. I don't think they even said her name, and if they did, I wasn't paying attention. Okay, so this woman was talking about how she fell in love with this man on Tinder. She swiped left or whatever you do. I've never been on there, but um, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people are on there. And so she had been on many, many dates on Tinder. But the thing that bothered me the most was that, not that, not that she was on, she went on many dates because as a single woman, she should be able to go on as many dates as she wants. It's the fact that she wasn't safe about it. You know, she's a grown woman. You would think that she would know better than to, I don't know, go off with someone that you don't really know and go back to their room and, uh, I don't know, everything about the situation was like, what the hell are you thinking? And that wasn't even the worst part of it. Um, yeah, it's okay to sleep with someone on the first date, I guess. You know, I I don't prefer to do that, but she slept with him. And then he took her on a trip, I think. To, yeah, he did. He took her on a trip to uh, Amsterdam. So he had all of her information, you know. He had her... Um, he had everything about her. He, he had her, her mom's location of where she lived, where she's from, her birthday, everything, everything you could think of he had on her, which she did not know him that well. Yes, they went on a little trip together and it was, I guess, very romantic and sweet. He took her to the best restaurants and they held hands. Uh, but that was it. They had spent that first night together. She just met him. She thought he was this rich you know, trust fund baby type of kid. Um, okay, so I guess it's the most watched movie on Netflix and I'd never even heard of it. So he poses a wealthy jet setting diamond mulk in order to woo women on Tinder and then con them out of money. They're estimating that he conned about $10 million, which I think it's even more, more than that. Okay, so this guy, I don't find him attractive. He's not my type. He's from Israel, and he's very Euro trashy. You know, he doesn't seem rich to me because most people, when they're rich on that level, supposedly, you know, that he, he pretended to be, they don't wear designer clothes with the name all over it. You know what I mean? They don't learn. It's like Gucci. You know, they don't do that. They're, they're more on the down low, I think. I mean, they still look kind of like uptight or, you know, what have you. Like they belong at a country club. Not all. But I think when you display your wealth the way that he did, it just was a big red flag. So I kind of would have known. I would have been like, oh, God, this guy. Okay, so he wooed her. He told her he loved her and they should move in together. And she even went out looking for apartments, you know, that they can move in together with. And that was weird, too, because you don't really know him that well. Yes, you talk to him every day through text messages or whatever, and he's really good at the con. But the truth is, they she didn't really know him. And like I said, it was like that one first night, and then they spent, I think, a few days together after that. So maybe at the most, four nights, maybe. I mean, if that. So that's what I was, you know, I was like, what the? Why would you, I don't know, why would you give him, why would you give him your passport information? Why would you do that? So she thought he was rich and all of this. And, um, I don't think she's a gold digger. I really don't. It seems like she is. Uh, but 
I think that she really was looking for love. She lives in that little fantasy world that most people do live in because there's still hope there. Nobody wants to give that up because we're like, we have to hope that there's just this amazing person out there that's going to come and just be our everything. You know, it's, it's not realistic. It's a fairy tale and fairy tales seem like they end well, but they usually don't. So, um, yeah, she's still kind of there too, which is surprising to me because I'm thinking, have you not learned anything? You know, she, whatever. Um, uh, I was intrigued with, intrigued with the Netflix story. I saw the world's greatest salesman. <laughs> it left me with a lot of unanswered questions and a very biased belief that there are two sides to every story and everyone should have a chance to tell their side of that story. So just that week, this con artist joined Cameo, a place fans can request personalized videos from thousands of stars and apparently allegedly con artist for a price. He charges 300 for a personalized video message and 1400 for business ones. It just makes me sick. I have this theme going this week <laughs> about con artists being rich and famous for no freaking reason, you know, just for being cons, um, manipulative. So I wonder if anyone's paid him for that yet. Okay, so he talked this woman um, into bringing him $25,000. And she had to get a loan, I think. I'm pretty sure. But first, first, I forgot about this part. She had her, um, he had her get an, Ameri an American Express that he could use. So she got a credit card and she gave it to him to use because he said that his enemies, he was always talking about his enemies. My enemies are trying to, you know, hurt us and we have to go into hiding and we can't leave a paper trail or, you know, whatever. And so he is just using her credit card and I don't know how much the limit was. I think it was, I think it was 5,000 or 10,000. And once that was through, she had to go back and ask for more credit. And they're like, okay, you know, she lied and said that she had a job where she was making more money. But I, yeah, so there's that. And then she had to get a loan out for $25,000 so she could bring it to him. So she gets there and she's thinking, you know, oh God, he's gonna pay me back all of this. It's just, I need to help him, I love him. We're gonna be together, we're gonna have babies together, all of this. And so she brings him the money and there was no red flags yet, which is weird. I, uh, you know, I, I feel badly for her. I do. But at first I was like, oh my God, are you crazy? <laughs> what is your problem? Why would you do that? Okay. So she brings him $25,000 and, um, he was like sending her pictures beforehand about his bodyguard getting attacked and so they're in this uh little ambulance and there was i think it was fake blood i don't know i don't know how much they paid this person to pretend that um he got attacked okay there's no justice here okay so that's a part of it she, she goes there but he also makes her think that she's in danger as well so she better just leave the money and get the fuck out of there so somehow she talked him into kind of and she talked her into leaving, leaving her the money and just getting the fuck out of there because he had plans. He had the money. He, you know, he wanted to live large. And so he started wooing this model, this really pretty tall blonde model. And he also at the same time had been talking to this other woman who she says they were just kind of friends, you know, and I believe that. Yeah. I mean, it just is weird. So she said she met him on Tinder and they became like really good friends and she had some money. She worked hard in her life. And so she would meet him for these lavish trips and he would be with the girlfriend, the pretty, you know, model. And, um, I think there's pictures. 
Yeah, you have to watch it. It's crazy. And so they would go on these trips. So she really trusted him. She thought, well, you know, we're going on these trips. We've had so much fun together. I like his girlfriend. She seems like a nice girl. You know, he, God, they were just spending mon money like no other. So basically he would use one girl to get money to spend it on another girl. And eventually he preyed upon his friend, the girl he met on Tinder. And he, she just said, there's no chemistry, but we became really good friends. And at one point, he borrowed money from her saying, oh, I, you know, I have, my enemies are after me. The same story, the same shit over and over and over again with everyone. You know, there was, there was a lot of women that finally came forward because this reporter from Israel, I think it was Israel. Yeah. He decided to write up, do a write up about him. And so he was freaking out the con man. He's like, oh God, everyone's going to recognize my face. So he went to his girlfriend in Prague and um, she had no idea what was going on. And um, somebody sent her the article, I think. I can't remember how she found out. <sighs> but um, he wanted to get plastic surgery to change everything about his face. But the surgeon wouldn't do it. And he's like, oh, hell no, no. That's for people that want to commit crimes or have committed crimes. And so I guess he was crying and whining like a little bitch. And, and she realized, I think somebody sent it to her on her phone and she looked at, she looked at it and she's like, oh my God, this is my boyfriend for like, they were together for a while, at least a few years, surprisingly. And she would hook him up with this really expensive clothing because that's the kind of business that she was in and, you know, Gucci Prada, whatever. And, um, his clothing was ridiculous. It was not, I don't get it. I don't get the whole designer thing. If it's a really cool design, you know, even then I wouldn't spend that kind of money, even if I had it, but yeah, he wanted to be all decked out. And at one point, this investigator went to his mom's house and she was like, I know nothing about this. He left when he was 18. We don't even talk. They lived in a really crappy, you know, flat in Israel. And it was just, the, you know, basic. It was like, how, he's pretty smart, just like Anna. Same type of shit, same bullshit, where they're actually really, really smart. And they're just really lazy when it comes to l having that lifestyle because they worked for it. That's the problem is that people want instant gratification. And so when they're smart like that, they become cons and they manipulate people. And instead of actually kind of getting a job and working for that and using your brains to get far, they use it to manipulate others to get them far. And it's just disgusting. So the fact that he has an agent and he's on um, cameo is really just gross. It's, so indicative of what our country is and what our world is. I can't say that he's from Israel and all of these women are all over Europe. So our world is really fucked up because we make celebrities out of people like this. And yeah, I guess he, um, okay. This is the problem. I think this is the, the reason why none of these women got justice and it's not their fault. It really isn't. But, um, first off, I think in schools, they should start teaching, um, life skills. You know, there's so many people that are book smart, but they're not street smart. And I think these women are some examples of that where I had been through hell and back. And so if that were me and this guy was, I wouldn't even have met him on that first night and went up to his room. I would have never done that. Um, I would have met him for maybe dinner. Uh, but yeah, it just, I don't, I wouldn't have fallen for her shit. There's no way I would have taken a loan out for him. There's no freaking way. And the way he talks is the way people talk to someone that they're conning. So I think women especially need to know about this. Actually men too. I know a lot of men that have been conned as well. <sighs> um... I think there needs to be classes on how to not get totally screwed over 
because in our society today especially that's what people tend to do and it's one thing to ask someone for money and they know that you can't pay them back you know what I mean that they're not trying to pretend to be something they're not they're just like oh my god my life is crazy I'm struggling do you think you could um, help me that's one thing that's not really a con you're not you know lying to them and then there's situations like this where these people are straight up lying about everything that they are their name that's that wasn't even his name Simon whatever he's who he wasn't rich he was from a like I said just really humble uh, life so these women the problem is that these women did give him the money that's really difficult when that happens just like with Anna her friend her fate you know they're obviously not friends Rachel had given up her credit card just so they wouldn't get arrested because they were in a foreign country and they're like you know what we need some form of payment for this and it ended up being sixty thousand um, dollars same with this guy he it's hard to prove that somebody conned you when you're just giving it to them like here here's everything I have and then some I'll never be able to pay this back but it's okay here you go and I understand why these women did it and I understand why people trusted him on some level because he did appear to have money what they didn't know that was that it was kind of a Ponzi scam and he was using other people he was taking money from other people to make make it seem like he had money with them and so then they would think oh well he'll pay me back he'll pay me back I'll give him my credit card as soon as he can when his enemies aren't after him anymore I mean it was so stupid he had this one a few pictures of him one where he just has a little bit of probably ketchup on his shirt <laughs> and he was like this and there's just you know a ketchup stain and then there's another one with his partner in crime let's just face it his bodyguard had like a little cut on his head and like a little bit of blood and it was ridiculous like I would I just would have called it out I'm so not trusting the people as it is so I think I would have been like bitch please it's not even real let's catch up so <laughs> yeah there's certain people that he wouldn't be able to play but then there's people like this that really want to believe in love they really do it's innocent but it's also very gullible and in today's society all over the world we need to teach women and men how not to get conned and they said well you know I googled him and well yeah you googled the name but did his picture come up and was it not only on social networking sites you know if it was just on social networking then anyone could do that but if there's pictures of his rich dad you know the diamond you know the king of the diamonds or what have you then that's another thing if you see him in pictures with the person he claims to be son or what have you or father I don't even know what I'm talking about but that's what I would have looked for I mean if I would have looked all over the internet I would have done a reverse picture lookup or what have you and I would have ignored the social networking and I would have tried to see what this man's family really looks like does he have a son even if is that his son's name if it is what does that son look like I would have done a full-blown check on that and so I think the authorities feel like well you guys were stupid enough to give him all of this money 10 million dollars or more I think it's more like 30 40 million I swear I do because there's so many people there's so many all over the world you know even in California New York just unbelievable Vegas I think so uh, ET's Denny Directo spoke with the tinder swindler journalist who reacted to um, the possible telling of his side of the story which he declined to do in the documentary so he never really talked but there was a lot of pictures and videos and voice messages that he left and screenshots uh, he doesn't feel any remorse at one point um, he contacted his girlfriend in Prague and she's funny she cracks me up she told him we have to sell all all of your designer stuff you know to pay uh, to 
to make sure that you're going to have some money because obviously you're fucked. And so most of it she had gotten for him anyways or hooked him up with. And so she went on eBay and started selling his stuff one item by one item. And he thought she was going to give him the money. And he's, she blew him off. And so he's like, what are you doing? Da, 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 da. And he always threatened the women. You know, he always threatened all of them to make it seem like, why well, he, he, he did. He had all their information. And so, you know, this is not going to end well. You do not want me as your enemy. Da, 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 you know. <laughs> and so, um, you know, trying to scare them, intimidate them, bully them. So she just said, fuck you. I don't care. You know, go ahead. Do what you're going to do. And so she sold all. Of, she tried. She's trying to get back $200,000 or more. And it was always around that for the other two as well. I think, well, actually one of them, it was like 150000 It was quite a bit of money. And like I said, he was using it to impress these models, model type girls. Uh, young, beautiful, blonde, tall, buying her whatever the fuck she wanted off somebody else's money or credit. And so, ugh, yeah. It says... Uh, Cecily, that was her name, who claimed in the documentary that between 2017 and 2019, she was swindled and alleged she took out $250,000 $250, worth of loans, all of which she says he spent and never repaid. And, you know, she's from Norway and lives in the United Kingdom. And all these years later, she's bankrupt in the UK and is still struggling with her creditors in Norway. I destroyed my life in two countries. Uh, so when people are saying and wanting me to take responsibility for my actions, I felt I've done that. I think that's unfair. I mean, I uh, blaming the victims. I don't like that. Yes, she should have been a little smarter about what she did. I would have never. She didn't even know the guy, and she went away to Amsterdam with him. I, I would have never, but that's just me. I can't sit here and go, oh, well, everyone should know better. You know, some people just, they want to believe the fairy tale. They want to believe that this is the prince that's going to save them. And so she just went along with it. And, um, yes, I did blame her at first. You know, I was judgmental. I was like, what the hell? What the fuck is she thinking? Why did she do that? And, you know, you brought it on yourself, you know, is that, and then you have to stop yourself and go, you know what? <sighs> She's a nice woman. All of the, all of the women are really nice, beautiful women. They wanted that fantasy. They wanted the dream. He made it seem like it was real with each and every one of them, but all they all compared notes and it's all the same. He was telling them all the exact same thing. He had a script. So they thought that he would pay them back because he showed them all of the money he had by spoiling, spoiling them, buying them flowers, taking them, them to fancy hotels, dinners, jewelry, you know, shoe, red bottom shoes, all of that. And so in their minds, they're just like, well, okay, so he does have enemies and he can't use his own credit cards. He needs the money for a deal. I guess that he kept saying there's a business deal that is going to go through. And then at one point he gave one of them a check and um, I think it was for like 250000 or what have you. And he, it didn't go through, of course. And it's just sad. It's, so I'm not going to sit here and blame the victims. Yes, in the um, Inventing Anna story, her friend did give up the, the credit card. But they were going to go to jail for not paying their hotel bill. And so what was she going to do? She didn't know they were going to charge it because Anna kept lying to her and saying, oh, no, I'll pay you back. And it's uh, I'm just waiting for the tra uh, I think it was the transfer or, yeah, the bank transfer or something like that. The wire. I don't know. But in her mind, she's thinking, oh, well, look at her. She's bought me all the stuff. She takes me out to fancy restaurants. She has all of this money and stays at nice hotels. So obviously, she she's going to pay me back. So that's what these people do. They make you think that they have all of this. But even then, you have to go, okay, how do how did they get all of this? You really have to do your research on everyone. You can't trust anyone. Everybody wants the Kardashian lifestyle. That's the problem. They want to be rich and famous and wear Gucci and Prada without having to actually work for it. 
you know, like the Kardashians. I'm sorry that people say, well, they do work. They're businesswomen. Yeah, pimping themselves out, marketing themselves. It's true. We're all marketing our, marketing ourselves in some way or another. Some people do it just because that's what we do on social networking. That's just what we do. It's what, it's how we live right now in society. It's just what it is. It is what it is. But then there's other people that want to present themselves in a certain way, which is obviously false and um, deceptive. And that's what these people have done. So yeah, inventing Anna. Yeah, that that's that was another scam. God. Okay, so that was disappointing too because nothing happened to him. He got arrested. I think it was for using a fake passport when he was in Greece. And he only spent five months in jail. And then he was just free. And none of those people, none of those women were allowed to press charges against him. For reasons unknown. If it's really, you know, $10 million or more, I just don't think, I think it's laziness. I don't think they want to take on such a big case all over the world. Um, all I know is that no one should pay to have him do a cameo for you. And he should absolutely be in prison. But there's, it's never going to happen. People like Anna too. The worst that's going to happen is she's going to get sent back to Germany and then she'll find a way to come back and then she'll have a reality show and she'll run for president and then she'll win and we'll have a president like her um, I'm convinced of that I'm like oh okay so this guy is obviously good at what he does he's, he's he's smart yeah I mean if you're that smart just like Anna use it for something good you know instead of hurting people I don't know. Yeah, I guess he's starting a business. He started a business too, like consoling other people, you know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm disappointed in society. <laughs> I am. I'm so just, I can't believe he didn't even get any time for what he did to those women. And it's because, you know, there, there's too many of them, but which is good, you would think. But I think the authorities feel like they deserved it. And um, that's, that's sad to me. Just like Rachel with um, Inventing Anna. It's like, oh, it's her fault. She gave up her credit card. Yeah, but she was manipulated into that. She really didn't have a choice. So I can't really blame the victims. All right. I have a software update ready to install. <laughs> and my arm's hurting because of the booster shot. So if there's anything else you want me to watch and talk about, let me know. So good night.